touched off a firestorm of protests and renewed conversation about issues such as racism and violence. Two News anchor Russ McCaskey spent most of the week in Ferguson documenting the feelings and emotions, the actions and reactions. He has the story in tonight's To The Point. Shoot hands up! Don't shoot hands up! Don't shoot! It's cold for us in Avenue, and it can heat up. Some here from the St. Louis area, people like Charles Brooks, who says he knew Mike Brown. And I represent the young black man in St. Louis, in Missouri, in the United States, and the world. You know, that, that man who's been unjustly treated for so long. Others have come in from other parts of the country, people like Sean McCullers from Atlanta who says he wants to make sure constitutional rights are protected. Obviously, this issue is an issue that concerns not only Ferguson, Missouri. This issue is representative of the frustrations that African-American youth face across the country, and not even just our youth, African-Americans, period. Well, after 11 o'clock at night here in Ferguson, and there's a couple hundred people on the streets, so far it's been relatively calm. There's been a few incidents where it seemed like tensions could really flare up, but right now, things are okay. <laughs> But that soon changed. Around midnight, we're told someone stole the cell phone and took off running. That created chaos on the streets. Police flew into action. Move! Everyone move! Move! Everyone move! Get the light out of my eyes! Get the light out of my eyes! Water bottles were thrown at officers. Pepper spray was unleashed. Eventually, police took control and calmed things down. No justice! No peace! No justice! No peace! Day 11, Ferguson, Missouri. The summer heat may be slowing protesters during the day, but they're just as passionate. Hands up! No shoot! No justice! No well, I'm not hurt today. I stay in this community, and I want justice for Mike Brown, and I want my community back. The protesters here are watching the grand jury investigation that's now underway, but some admit the outcome could ignite an even bigger firestorm. Just pray that they can come to the right decision here, because if not, this, will, this city will change forever. Instead of tear gas, it's the sweet smell of barbecue that fills the air over Ferguson, Missouri. Reds was damaged and looted in the chaos, but the will be back promise is now a reality. Just get things back to normal. I think that that's that's good to uplift the spirits of the neighborhood. A couple blocks away from where the main protest is going on, this is where it all began. This is where Michael Brown was shot. Now a makeshift memorial sits in the middle of the road. People who live nearby say it's a reminder every day of what happened. It's something they're still trying to come to terms with. This was a pedestrian walking across the street is it, it, you know, as if you or I and the police come by and tell them to get out the street and that goes from from zero to murder in 10 seconds. And that didn't make any sense to anybody. And it still doesn't make any sense. Meantime, as night falls, the protest pushes on. But guess what? They put their pants on just like me. I'm a human. They make mistakes. Rain may have reduced the numbers, but on this night in Ferguson, there was something very different. Organization. No justice, no peace. No All we're doing tonight is trying to keep the peace, make sure things stay in a peaceful manner. Clergy and community leaders calling themselves the peacekeepers are doing what police have failed to do for the last week and a half, turn the chaos into order. We are one! We are one! The police definitely understand that we are here as a buffer mm -hmm. um, between, you know what I'm saying, the people and them um, so that tensions won't get high. So just indict one man! In this electric environment, most police officers are friendly. Other than that, you have to keep walking out here. But there are a few constantly giving orders, creating more tension. Off the block! Off the block! Yeah! Get off the block! In contrast, the clergy and community leaders are acting as a go-between, keeping the crowd calm. And many hope this newfound peace will last. What they cannot get is violence. Mm -hmm. They want that, but we're not going to give it to them. Tonight we come together as one, and we're going to stand as one, and we're going to march as one. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. Every night on Fluorescent Avenue starts the same way. Hands up, don't shoot. People gather to walk and let their voices be heard. There are incidents and arrests, 
All this unfolds under a massive spotlight. There are reporters in Ferguson from all over the world, Germany, Hong Kong, London. Well, I think the issue of uh, militarization of police is, is an important issue even in the UK. And obviously this particular issue with uh, the mix of uh, possible racism and other issues do affect us in the UK. And obviously this is a tragic uh, thing, but by the time it's got the National Guard here, that's like an international story. The reporters from foreign countries tell us that the struggles that we have here in America aren't all that different from the struggles that they've had in their own countries. They say that's what makes this story interesting. Ahmed Yavas is a TV reporter from Turkey. Because, you know, maybe one year before there was another protest or, um, in the Turkey, Gezi Park protest. It is maybe some make some connections with this protest. So as the drumbeat continues on on Florissant Avenue, amid a sometimes uncomfortable conversation about racism and violence, what happens here is being seen literally across the globe.